Our objectives with screen headings are, one, do not confuse the reader, and two, make the story flow as easily as possible. Don't let scene headings trip you up. Let's talk some more about how to format your screenplay's scene headings. What's up, storytellers? I'm Jay Shear, author of the time travel novel Time Slingers, and co-writer and producer of Star Wars Rivals, the fan film. Also, we got... Death of a Bounty Hunter coming out pretty soon, too. I've co-written three short films, co-produced two of those, and written around a dozen or so short film scripts. On today's video, I'll explain the basics of screenplay formatting related to scene headings, using my own screenplays as examples and some other professional scripts as well. If you want more details about the process of writing and producing science fiction and fantasy stories, Subscribe to this channel and check out more of our videos. Honestly, the most difficult part about formatting scene headings is keeping it simple. The biggest mistake you can make is actually adding too much to a scene heading. Here's the basic formula for a good scene heading. Say whether or not the scene takes place inside or outside using EXT or INT, exterior or interior, then give the location and then give the time. That's it. Pretty simple. Occasionally, some screenwriters will add a more specific sublocation, like a particular room of a house. So you might see something like exterior, interior, location, sublocation, and then the time. The first decision you have to make is whether the scene takes place inside or outside. Interior scenes will be labeled as INT, while exterior scenes will be labeled as EXT. Pretty simple. If your scene immediately transitions from an interior to the exterior or vice versa, you would use INT slash EXT, or like I said, vice versa. That's something that you don't see much and I would generally avoid it so as not to cause any confusion. In our feature film, the one I'm currently writing, the poster's right here on the wall behind me, <laughs> many of the scenes take place in the desert, so that looks like exterior desert. But some scenarios can be a bit more complex than that. Let's look at some variations of the location portion of the scene heading. Ideally, scene headings should only have one location referenced, but sometimes, as is the case with stories that take place inside homes, it's necessary to specify where in the home a scene takes place. The most effective strategy, in my opinion, is to keep it as simple as possible. Here's the setup for our feature film, Death of a Bounty Hunter. Over the course of several scenes in our screenplay, we cover two different locations inside an estate. The same estate, which is called, in our film, the Duskfinder Safe House. Our first scene takes place inside the drawing room. Now there are two ways we could probably showcase that. One, interior Duskfinder Safe House drawing room time. Or two, we could just use interior Duskfinder drawing room time. Let's say that the next scene moves into a different room of the house. Here are some of the ways that you could handle that. Interior Dustfinder Safe House Infirmary time, or Interior Dustfinder Infirmary time, or my personal favorite, Infirmary. Which one is the absolute best? It depends. Let's say that each scene plays out sequentially, one right after the other, in a continuous manner. If that's the case, I would probably use Interior Dustfinder Safe House Drawing Room time. Then, when I switch rooms, Infirmary. Then when I go back, drawing room. We're not breaking the flow. We haven't left the Duskfinder safe house at any time, which means that those scene headings denote that we're just in a different room inside the estate and that this is all playing out sequentially. It makes the screenplay really easy to read and it flows really well. If we had to break up the flow of those scenes, let's say we went to an extremely different location, for example, then we'd be back to the longer format. Interior Dustfinder safe house, drawing room, time, then switching to a completely different location, exterior Jericho jail, time. And then interior Dustfinder safe house, infirmary, time. So obviously if we had just used infirmary like we did in the previous example, the script reader would be confused as to whether we meant an infirmary inside the Dustfinder safe house or an infirmary somewhere around the Jericho jail. We don't wanna cause that kind of confusion and interrupt the flow of the reader. Our objectives with screen headings are, one, do not confuse the reader, and two, make the story flow as easily as possible. In regards to the time function, that last part of the scene heading that I haven't defined yet, it just defines the time of day. Options include day, night, dusk, and dawn. Writers will occasionally use continuous, 
which indicates that one scene flows directly to the next. Moments later, which indicates that a very short period of time has passed between scenes. Later, which indicates that a longer time frame has passed between scenes. And simultaneous or same, which means that the location has changed, but the scene is occurring in the same time frame as the previous scene. Here's how I use these scene heading time frames. We've got a scene inside the saloon, but the scene continues outside the saloon onto the porch. It's continuous. I've heard different opinions on how frequently and when to use later or moments later. General wisdom would be only to use them when a scene takes place in the same location, but after time has passed. I've used those moments later or later when there's a slight location change, but when I also think it's important to indicate that time has passed. That might not be technically 100% correct from a formatting perspective, but I'll use it if it makes sense to do so. And finally, simultaneous or same means that the scene takes place in the approximate time period represented by the previous scene. That's useful for when you have two major events happening at once that will eventually be brought into the same timeline. Those are the basics of scene headings. And here's some examples, both from my own work and from the works of others, for what they look like. So I thought we'd go through the Avengers Endgame script as a part of this, just to look at some of the screen headings and to see how they're formatting the screen headings here. Obviously, this is a script by Marcus and McFeely. Um, this is the script that they released uh, for the consideration of the Oscars for Best Adapted Screenplay. It did not. I don't think was I don't think it was nominated for best adapted screenplay so just context. One of the things you'll notice right off the bat, uh, pretty standard exterior Barton home day. I'm going to scroll through most of this in future videos I'll talk about different aspects of the way that they're formatting what they're doing here, but trying to get to some specifics related to scene headings first. Here's a really interesting one to me. I actually looked this up because we're going to look at the Joker script as well, which was nominated for an Oscar. So whenever something's nominated for an Oscar, it's something that is like a cue to me to definitely hone in on because we want to make sure we understand why it was nominated for an Oscar and what people are thinking is the standard way we should do. We should approach things now. Um, according to scriptrect.com, you should not actually, it's not standard practice to use the comma. So you'll notice in the video I've been talking so far, about how you'd have interior or exterior, you'd have your location, you'd have your sublocation, and then you would have your time. So in this example here, interior, exterior, obviously, that's pretty standard. Then here's the location, the Benatar, which is a you know spaceship. Um, then the then the sublocation. So within the Benatar, this is the sublocation, and then your time. Now the problem is is that I gave you a dash, and they're using a comma. So two of the scripts we're going to look at today use commas. You'll notice that when I'm using it in, in my scripts, I'm using dashes because dashes are technically speaking the most technically correct way of doing this. Now, screenplay formatting is not the end all be all. The story is the end all be all. The formatting just goes along with making it easier to read. In this case, a screenplay that's formatted like not technically correctly is still you know, in this case, obviously really easy to read. We know that they're on the Benatar and we know that they're in the galley. So I talked about this a little bit earlier on that we could, um, in this kind of context, I would have probably formatted this a little bit differently because I would have wanted to be a little bit more creative with it. So I would have said interior Benatar dash galley dash night. Um, we already know that we were just outside the Benatar because we were in the, in the blank, the, the blackness of space. Um, a drift, right? It says that a drift. But then I would go to, so if I was going from this line here to the next line, we are still in the Benatar. And it technically is probably not continuous here. I haven't read this specifically, um, but it doesn't look like it's continuous to me, um, which, which now you have two options, right? You could just say flight deck right here. But because this is not continuous and they didn't, Tony Stark and Nebula didn't go straight from the galley to the flight deck, that's probably why they're not using that type of um, technique. They're probably, they're introducing an entirely new scene because effectively what they're trying to say is like later on. <laughs> so this, since this scene here does not follow this scene here, they're not making it seem like the characters just moved into the next area. And that's probably fine, but it'd be kind of cool if they just put flight deck here. 
Um, again, they might have put flight. I would have probably one of the things I would have done is I would have taken all of this part out and just put flight deck later, and then boom, 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 because you got the beats going, you know. Um, but anyways, that's kind of what I might have done. Um, here's an interesting one flashback. I'll talk about that more on our Patreon video version. So definitely become a member of the Story Geeks Club and check out this aspect of doing flashbacks. You'll notice there's a couple flashbacks in here. So here's another one. Um, this one's kind of interesting to me. Again, interior, Avengers compound, comma, living area, comma, day three. Um, what's interesting about this is that generally speaking, you would not give, they're giving you a day three here. So this is you know normal, obviously. The comma, again, is debatable about whether or not you should use that. This is very unusual to see like day three. The reason that day three matters in this regard is that if you guys remember back to this film, they're still responding to how they're gonna go after Thanos. And so day three matters because the number of days that have ticked by uh, really matters. A lot of screenplay writers probably would have put this um, down here somewhere, whether it be they added a, a subtitle or something else, a, um, a superscript was what it would have looked like. But again, they're using the sub location with the comma, which is pretty interesting. Now, this is a really interesting scene um, that I want to talk a little bit about, talk extensively about this scene on Patreon. But if you look at the script for the portal scene, Steve watches Sam soar over the field and then turns as even more portals open. And then you see from one, these people come. From another, these people come. From a third, these people come. A unique scene requires unique formatting. And so the, the fact that they've done it in this way is pretty cool because it gives you an indication of what they were thinking about when they were writing the script. And that's a classic, iconic scene uh, in geek films is those portals opening. So that's kind of a cool way of formatting that. In the screenplay right now, Thanos is fighting, Thanos and Thanos' army are fighting a lot of Avengers. <laughs> lots and lots of superheroes. And you'll notice this across the field. So this is, this is almost like it's all happening in the same scene. Um, but since this scene is so extensive, here's an interesting one. Uh, we talked about interior, exterior. Um, in the video I just did and how it's rarely utilized. And the reason this says interior exterior here is because they're technically in the van, but they're looking outside of the van. So right here, like they grow to normal size in the front seat. So they're in the front seat, but out the windshield, Thanos's horde charges at their friends. So that's why they're using the interior exterior, which is a pretty good example of how you might do that because we're seeing both the interior of the van and the exterior of what's outside the van at the same time. So here's a style that I really like. What we see is this is the exterior of the crater at daytime. And then all of these things happen in this area. But we need to kind of focus in the camera, if you will, and the action that's happening needs to be focused on specific areas around this giant um, location, if you will. So we say at the ridge, that's like a sub location within the greater crater location. There's across the field, which we've heard um, before. There's the van. Um, and all of these things can be seen by the camera in the location, but we want to zoom in on certain things at certain times as the story unfolds. All right, we just took a look at the Avengers script, saw some unique things about that. We saw some unique things and some aspects of things that I referenced in the video that we could apply to that screenplay. This screenplay, Joker, by Todd Phillips and Scott Silver, was actually nominated for um, Best Adapted Screenplay. So let's take a look at some of the unique ways that scene headings are formatted in Joker. Here's a really specific example um, of a couple things. One. As I mentioned, they're also using commas. Now, technically, like I said before, uh, comma is not necessarily the most technically accurate way of doing that. So therefore we have exterior, we have a location, um, we have, and technically it's like a sub location inside this location, I think. Um, it could be, it sounds to me like Gotham Square is a location within Midtown as opposed to the other way around. So it's almost like sub location, location. I not sure I would have done it that way. I probably would have gone exterior, um, midtown dash 
Gotham Square dash afternoon. And this says actually specifically days later. So in this example, they're actually using the moments later. They changed it to days later. Um, but they're actually using that coupled with afternoon. Now, why are they doing that? Why are they using afternoon and days later? They want to show that time has passed, but they also need a specific time frame in which they're filming. So a lot of times if I were to use, if you were to use moments later here, people would think that it was the same day and not like, like five minutes later, right? If you were to use later, you might, you would, you might still need to specify that it was in the afternoon and they're just doing that. So they want it to specifically be known that this is days later for a reason. This is a really unique one. You'll notice exterior corner comma alley dash Gotham square. I think what they're basically saying is we start out on the corner. We move down the alley. We're in Gotham square. And this is continuous from the last shot. Kind of an interesting way of doing that. I don't know if I would have done it that way. I think I might have done exterior corner dash Gotham square dash continuous. And then I probably would have had like another scene heading for alley down here somewhere when they run into the alley. Here's a unique thing you don't see in scene headings very often. Interior city bus, and it notes that it's moving. It notes that the bus is moving. Um, and that's kind of interesting because I, I would have thought that they would have just included that the bus was moving in the action description, which is sort of strange. Um, and they actually talk about the direction that it's heading, which is kind of interesting as well. And I don't know if that is... A lot of times you would think that that specific information was necessary because of what was what needed to be seen in the film itself. But I don't even know that we can tell that the bus is heading uptown or I mean, it could say that in the action itself. So kind of an interesting way of doing that screen heading as well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about montages or a sequence of shots in the Patreon video that I'm going to do. But just so you can kind of see what that sort of looks like. You have this where it's like scene, 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 scene with very little action in between. And that's just basically to showcase that we're moving quickly through these scenes. Interior, Wayne Hall, inside the theater, in inside the Center for Performing Arts at dusk. I like this as the opening one, but then you'll notice that like, okay, now we're on the exterior. That's fine too. I'm okay with it being the exterior because we were inside, now we're outside. And then we're going to, he's going to go to the front entrance. He's going to enter the lobby. Now, from now on, um, we're going to see most of the scenes are going to be inside the Center for Performing Arts. Now, what I would like to do, what I would think would be cool, is to do interior, Center for Performing Arts, lobby. And then for all the rest of these scenes, you could be like, second level, balcony. And then you could be like, uh second level balcony later then you could be then you could say uh second level wayne hall continuous and in that way we know you're inside the center for performing arts and then we're just kind of clarifying where we're at within that within that hall again maybe not super technically correct but i kind of like it because i think it adds a stylistic difference that um i like a lot one of the things i would note is that we did not really see continuous being used hardly at all in the scene headings for the marvel script but we've seen it a lot more frequently here in the joker script um again you don't have to use it i kind of like it personally because i think it, it actually has meaning to it but you will not always see people using it all right the last film we're going to look at today is actually a short film that i am currently working on and it only has two locations one of the things that you're going to want to think about when you're writing and producing your own films is the more locations you have the more difficult it is to pull it off and the more money it's going to cost because you're going to have to pay a lot of times you have to pay those locations or you have to set up those locations you have to get crews to those locations it costs money to move crews from one location to another so trying to keep this less expensive by only having two locations. The first location is exterior desert at night, and that becomes day at some points in time as well. The second location is inside the Jericho Sheriff's office. That's a shorter period of time wherein those scenes unfold. So they, they all take place at night, but the, the desert scenes change time. So there's nothing super fancy about this script and that's, you know, you can keep the, your scene headings very basic exterior desert day. Um, I do change point of view in the film, um, which is something that you can do again, sort of with a, I wouldn't call this a scene heading, 
but it is somewhat a scene heading because it's going to require your crew to do a setup. So if you're doing a general point of view and then you actually go to a specific person's um, point of view, which is what POV means, what POV stands for, then you are going to do a different setup. And that is going to take time and effort to change the location. In this context, we're still in the same place. The location is the same. It's just that the point of view of the camera, the point of view of what we're focused on as an audience has changed, which requires a different approach to the production. So I don't actually have this as specifically a scene heading. I have it as something that's in bold. Um, sort of similar to the way that we saw in the Marvel script, the Endgame script, where you saw that we that they had taken um, on the ridge or different aspects of this bigger scene where we were going to focus our attention. We're just doing that with point of view. Now, here is another little trick. This is, again, not really a scene heading. Within this scene, I want to concentrate on different areas of the scene. It's important that we know what's going on underneath the table, but also at the table or above the table. There's two, because this guy's got a pistol drawn underneath the table, right? So El Nino's pistol is drawn, and we're looking right down the, the barrel um, as, the, as the audience. That's important to know because above the table, the other characters don't know that. So we know it as an audience, but the other characters don't know that. And it kind of draws us into more of um, some tension going on in this scene. And that's pretty much it for looking at scene headings right now. As I mentioned, I'll talk about montages and flashbacks and things like that in the Patreon video that I'm going to release. So make sure you become a member of the Story Geeks Club for that. But I think we've got a pretty good handle on what it takes to do scene headings. The biggest conflict that we've had is that generally speaking most people would say that the technically correct way of listing location sublocation is when you have a dash but as we've seen a lot of people are using commas so just be aware that that is a discrepancy between what people want to use but again our objective is to make it easy to read and easy to understand what's going on and it just so happens that even the screenplays that use the commas, it's fairly easy to tell what they mean and they can get away with it. Now that we've seen a bunch of different examples, what are some of the more complex scenarios and how do we handle them? For VIP members of the Story Geeks Club, I'll show you how we've used more complex scene heading formatting for montages, flashbacks, and more. You can become a VIP member for as little as $2 a month. Thank you in advance. We really appreciate your support. Also, there's one thing that you should rarely, if ever, do in your scene headings. I'll talk about that as well. Here are the key takeaways from today's video. Keep your scene headings simple. Don't get crazy. Use the formula, interior, exterior, location, time. Concentrate on two simple objectives. Don't confuse the reader and keep the story flowing as easily as possible. Do you have any other tips or tricks or a question? Leave me a comment down below, I'd love to help. If you want more details in the process of writing and producing science fiction and fantasy stories, subscribe to this channel. I'll fill you in on all the details related to writing and producing our own films so that you can apply them yourself. If you liked this video, bash that like button for me. I'll see you on the next video.